Atlas. We don't have to wait too much longer to figure out what Exit wants to do with their defensive uh, decisions. We're gonna get into the attacker bands here as Exit will remove Habana. Pretty straightforward one here for Clubhouse. All right, so looking at the second ban as well here. Gonna have Furious first pick and second pick coming up after that one. Flores making perfect sense, especially considering we're onto Clubhouse here. A lot of tight angles, a lot of rooms that you really cannot access directly. So do need to see him get knocked out there to make that a bit easier. Yeah, it's always been such a fantastic pick for a lot of these different squads to be able to get rid of any multitude of utilities, whether it be evil eyes all the way down to deployable shields. Mare will be banned out for Furia's defensive ban, and Exit will also remove Kai. Now, just to remind you guys, Thatcher still is in play, so this is more or less just a spot ban for them, just making things a little bit easier and making it to where Exit doesn't necessarily have to force Thatcher into their lineup. So expected first sight choice coming out here as well now from Exa going directly into the basement that has, at least in North America, become very much the go-to for most teams here as they'll start out and, generally speaking, have a pretty good chance to win that out on the defensive side. I would expect this round to be no different. We'll see what type of aggression Furia can bring to the table, though. They're also bringing the expected lineup. Maverick for the backup hard breach if necessary. Thermite taking over the primary. Defenders and aside from that, we did not see Thatcher five. being eliminated. Uh, despite that, however, for a lot of teams, he kind of moves out of the way for comfort picks, so we're not going to see him be brought in just yet by Fury. They won't necessarily need it as teams have, of course, found plenty of ways to execute into these sites without necessarily needing that style of utility. Yes, indeed. And for X set, it's going to be downstairs to the basement initially here. We'll have Thunderbird along for the ride. Uh, operator we haven't got to see too much of today, at least inside of the matchups that you and I have casted. But I believe we got to see her a couple of different games that were viewed by uh, different parties. And well, now we're going to have him here for Gomez. And those cone stations will surely be able to eddy anybody that needs it later on in the round once things start getting down to the nitty gritty. Fury about to be out here and on to the board as they are going to be going for a pretty traditional operator lineup when it comes to Clubhouse. Like I said, not any huge surprises showing up inside of this first round. That will have to wait until a later oh, point well, in it, but okay, wow. Uh, handy. Did he, did he run out? No. Getting a surprise what? kill? Oh, no, he, there was a punch hole. Wow, fantastic eyes on Handy for that. That is definitely one that's pretty difficult to see at that range. Pretty impactful player going down to Yaga being removed from play. Hopefully all the cameras were set up, but okay, things are going very quickly. Furia gonna make mincemeat of the words I said where they tend to play a bit of a slower style of Siege. Not the case here at the start. They're taking as much control as they can of this top four. They wanna clear out this roam early on, and so far they're succeeding in doing so, but Gomez is still alive and well here. He'll need to be dealt with before they can focus on the site. He's going to start to respond a little bit here. Brings Fantasy down, gets the confirmation too. We'll try to ditch through the hatch. It looks like it's a successful retreat. He still needs to make his way down through main stairs, though, and that's where he's going to run into some big issues. Well, the good news is now, is since he's gotten these kills and been able to equalize, he can more than likely delay an extended period of time over here inside of Strip. Even past that, if he's allowed to just exist here, he could potentially rotate back in later. Handy's actually not even going to drone him out. Looks in the hallway, tries to find him inside of Billiards, but obviously nobody home. And this is going to be a huge time sink here for Furia. Gomez continuing to creep forward here, looking to make a secondary amount of impact against the push from Furia. This is the big mistake with Furia going for a bit of a haphazard clear of the upstairs hold. They didn't lock down Gomez at any point, so he's now wasting a massive amount of time. Furia do not have the confidence to move forward further into the basement while he's here, and oh my goodness. They let him out. <laughs> they just let him out. No one has Overwatch on main stairs. He was hiding out here by bathroom pretty much the entire time, but he just wraps right around them as they try to push him and heads downstairs, so he'll survive, and now we just go into a normal 3v3 late round. Yeah, the biggest grin on his face as Furia practically opened the door for him and allow him to just escape back to the basement. Furia now have to try and figure out a plant spot here with a minute remaining. We still have some options here for soft breach potential to try and get some verticality across the top of armory, but it's going to be hard fought. We definitely still have some hard breach they'll be able to pop these hatches with and start applying some pressure across the board. But for Exet, this is going to be a fa uh, fairly straightforward affair. They've got Nitro cells, they've got smokes on Kino. They're just awaiting the arrival of the offense. Andy once again preparing this drone right here for the rest of Fury. Start of this round out. Well for the squad, and gonna look to try and carry it even further here. As the first to fall was Iago with that punch hole. Spirit's the next, now who's gonna fall yet here? Diaz picking up the next frag. Kino as well, shutting it down. Furia cannot maintain in the 3v3, and Xset take initial control. Exet excited already. You can hear him all the way across the room as round one will go into their back pocket. And a pretty interesting 
I, I think that's obviously the best way to put it. Opening part of the round is Furia just There's went for ran it. up into the building. <laughs> went for that it. was it. Yeah, there's, there's, I mean, yeah, aggressive, sure, but I'm, I mean, in the most grandiose possible way. I am assuming what ended up happening was after the kill against uh, Keener Yug at the mm -hmm. beginning there, they probably think, all right, there's got to be like one person max remaining up here, which is overwhelmed with like two to three Defenders of us, then we can focus on the base too. I don't think they were expecting as much resistance, and for them to be as well prepared for that type of a push as well when it finally came to bear against them. Yeah, it will also, for X set, I mean, I think they capitalized on the situation pretty damn well. We saw them, you know, have those late rotations come through the top floor, especially for, I believe, Diaz that ended up actually climbing up the, um, uh, it was either him or Gomez that ended up actually coming up cash stairs there for a moment, and ended up uh, eventually rotating back down. But it's those little, you know, side pieces of pressure that come through that Furia aren't exactly ready for. They're so tunnel vision of trying to clear out that top floor. They're not exactly suspecting another defender to try and rotate into them, especially at a time frame like that. So now for Furia, more than likely going to slow things down a bit and try and gather more map control before immediately trying to take it to exit. Start of the real round begins now. Here is Furia. Just to clear out the second floor hole that Exit has gone for here. No huge change ups from the Exit side of things, just the appropriate ones needed for the secondary site that they fall into now. As far as Furia is concerned, a lot of the same as well. Maverick being kept in Ace, also swapped out now. Going to see the rest of Furia try to work their way through here and continue to clear out the remnants of X set. Away from that, though, already seeing Miracle work on opening up this main balcony access point. Shouldn't be too much of a delay past this. This is usually the first thing we see our attackers go for. Again, not much resistance in there from X set either. They're just going to let this one get opened up as this kind of the way this generally plays out. Yes, indeed. And it's going to be a little bit of a lull here initially. Well, the first minute, this X set able to stave off Furia for the time being, but they're mostly dedicating themselves to drones as well as a few odds and ends just to make sure that X set can't get around their overall attack setup. To at least destroy a couple of boards at the bottom here. Gomez obviously knowing where that Claymore is as well due to the audio that he heard to his left. So he does have the potential to hop out here, but it's going to be hard fought. He's going to have to get the Claymore and immediately 180 in order to take the fight, and he'll get it. Wow. That was gorgeous from Gomez. Those beautiful mechanics made out on full display here. He'll finally get taken down after that, but that's one LMG out of the way and actually don't even have to worry about any more. Fantasy gone, STK now gone as well as Yago will take him out inside a bar connector and Spirits potentially with one as well, but no, it's Yog yet again. Miracle will go down, Spirits, some amazing shots and Xset with a flawless round. Xset beautifully done. Starts out well right from the beginning of it too with Gomez getting aggressive outside of the blue window, shutting down the Repel play, already removing some of the security that seemingly Fury had built up for themselves on that Repel position, and from that point forward, it's just domination, whether it's the front door or here, inside of the catwalks on Garage, it all goes Xset's way. It gives them a flawless round to get them two out of three of their site lockdowns. Going to go to the third expected one now, Jim Bedroom, before they rotate back down to the basement on round four. Yeah, that, that was just strong across the board there from Xset. Strong yeah, garage hold, Spirits playing that out masterfully, as well as continually applying pressure to Furia across the board. Board, whether it be through secret stairs or just having Yogg rotate around and try and hold one of the cutoffs uh, near the center of the map. And all of it puts extremely well. Exit now up 2-0 on their defensive path. Exit continuing on the warpath here in Fury, looking for solutions in terms of how to get them off of it here. We'll see what exactly they try to evolve themselves into. Not much going to be changing up in terms of the operator lineup in round number three. We do see the Finca coming into the fold for Fantasy. And that looking pretty much identical, still keeping the triple heartbeat in play too. We are going to see a slight change up in the soft reach department, just the switch up from the sledge over towards the buck. X set with a multitude of shields here at the top of cash, John. I do believe we have a few ADSs to go along with that. DSM more than likely applies some discs later on as he's just holding on to those to see what move could potentially be made. Maybe they're going to throw in a bunch of stuns or something like that, and he'll be able to just pocket those discs and then apply them later when needed. And now for Furia, what about we are as they'll be coming in from the west side. We're going to have a lead or something along those lines. Ah, oh, it was Kino, I do believe, popping the hatch for Gomez through logistics. But we definitely did have something. Yeah, STK and his Selma charges going off. I do believe that's over on Jacuzzi. Weren't able to exactly break that rare. You're going to need to get a better angle on that. And X set, they've been able to equalize already. Two of the Furia members late to the party. It's a three versus three. Kino's got some extra smoke, so keep applying them to where the burn is and see if he can try and hold them back. Fantasy was a very serious damage. He'll go down. He's picked up by Kino. Diaz trying to get in by 
behind yet again, but it won't happen this time as it's down to the 2v2 with two minutes remaining. Furia, they're taking risks here, especially with that haphazard execute, but unfortunately the fumble on the hatch drop on top of the detached execute that followed it up really throws them into a bad spot. But still, they're able to keep it winnable here at a two versus two due to some aggression coming out there from Fantasy, distracting and allowing for another player to work their way in. Let's pick up an additional frag here. A bit of a misplay though from Fantasy. Ultimately, he's not able to make much happen with that push through the toxic gas. And now it's running, but could have been a 3v2 into a 2v2 here. Furia trying their hardest not to make a secondary mistake, but at the same time, Xset doesn't want to feed anything over towards this Furia roster. Rare is the first to take challenge at the top of main stairs. Rap, but it's going to be STK, though, to win it out against the second player from Xset. Everything going to fall to our internal bathroom player, Kino, but he won't be able to maintain. And now Furia finally picking up one of their own. Well, it wasn't the easy road, but it was theirs, and they were able to claim the round. Furia finally getting one on the board after round three in a pretty explosive manner. I mean, immediately trying to drop into logistics and take as many fights as they potentially can. I also believe that was partnered with a rush in from the jacuzzi wall and potentially someone trying to fight around main stairs or balcony. We really didn't get the best, uh, you know, advantageous position on that. So either way, Furia able to make it through the thick of it. I think that's the big thing. There. Very scrappy round, but able to find the frags when they needed the most. Well, let's see if Furia can keep it rolling here. Some good aggression coming out from them. Once again, playing a very, very fast style of attacking side at the moment. Well, Xset responding to it quite nicely in most scenarios there. Unfortunately, just falling a little bit too short, giving away too many players to 1v1s inside of that previous round there in part due to their own choices and in part due to the kind of claustrophobic nature of the gym site. Hopefully, it will not repeat itself as they head back down onto more expensive pastures in the basement. Ready. Ten seconds remaining. Still going to dedicate themselves to this Roan game here. You can signify Five that by not only the Mozzie coming through, but the Mute Jammers for Spirits as he'll be able to hold up a lot of these reinforced walls the towards the defeated. outside of the building, like Jacuzzi as well as CCTV. DS will just be here to try and pick some things up with his pass and potentially have a drone that could work against the offense later into the round. As for Furia, they haven't changed up all too much across the board, all except for Fantasy, who is now on IQ with 552 Commando. SDK starting things off well for Fury at the beginning of the fourth round by being able to knock out Gomez, catching his aggression this time where previously didn't work out too well. Yaga still a factor, however, on the inside of this upstairs room, but there's a lot of pressure broiling itself out, ready to knock him down, and we're going to see it come to bear immediately. Fantasy with the pretty fire lineup has no trouble knocking Yaga out. This is a much cleaner fight so far from Fury, but the response is still there as Spirits reascends upstairs and is able to trade back against Fantasy before more than likely falling back now that he's been able to make the numbers a bit more winnable. It's a huge pickup. Getting rid of the IQ in this position with Valkyrie in play means that Xset's going to have a lot of info game going into the later parts of this round, but it doesn't really matter if Furia kills everybody first before we get there. Spirit's trying to swing out and equalize. He'll be able to do so and at least get it to a 3v2. A lot more power roll than it was before, but still a really long road ahead of them. SDK, he'll get the information on Spirit's rotating back to site, which more than likely signifies that the majority of this map is clear and they just need to start working on their verdict as well as their hatch work. Oh, oh, nice. oh, 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 he gets Kino. away with a kill. There's a second player following him up as well. Waits for the spray to finish and sneaks right through. How does he do that? As Furia, Handy surely would have traded that back out, but no, is not able to find him. As Kino runs away, keeps himself alive, and evens out the numbers yet again. Here is where we saw Exit falter previously, though. This pinch push coming in for the two remaining Furia members. STK from up on top, or rather Handy, I should say, from up on top, and STK working his way in from dirt. Exit, it's all been left to Kino and Spirits already seen Kino play out just a few seconds prior, of course, with his wild push up the stairs to knock out the first member of the remaining squad for Fury here. Away from that, trying to isolate the drone intel, but it doesn't work. SDK has locked down the first player's position, but it's not going to be able to win the fight. Instead, it goes to Spirits. Now I already know where the play is going to come from with regards to Handy. They block out the hatch. He drops through it regardless. Has been able to get himself access to Arsenal and picks up the first kill. Another clutch potentially brewing here for the Fury roster. That would tie the game up as well, but a bit more work needed to be done. A bit of intel needed to be eliminated here in this specific case as he knocks out that camera on the back line. Won't give an angle over to Kino as he now swings out from the bottom of main stairs. He's going to try to deny this first attempt. Oh! No! <laughs> It'll just outright deny the round as the Toxic Bay finishes off the very low HP of Handy.
That was an incredible round there from Kino. And Exit overall, like we were talking about how the initial round was pretty scrappy, but that right there was uh, the only way back into the round was aggression. They had to fight Furia. They had to try and equalize and to accomplish that, especially with the way that Kino is. I mean, that's not, oh, I'm just going to hold the main stairs and hope somebody peeks me. He is going in search of Furia on main stairs and still able to gather that kill when it mattered most. Equalizes and forces Furia into a really bad situation well, they actually have to split both the remaining members. One has to go dirt, one has to try and hold things down on hatch, and they just don't have the pressure any longer to try and take it to the two defending X set members. So, an interesting attack and repick if we see it get locked in there. Take a look at Fantasy real quick, as we're going to potentially have a Fuse coming into play here. Some very specific use cases for it. This might be one of them if they end up going for it. So we'll keep our eyes locked onto that. But aside from that, Exit, of course, retaking their control with the successful basement play. Now just looking to move right along schedule here to their other hold, which is going to be upstairs inside of Cash and CCTV. Same operator lineup as the previous hold. They wanted, of course, so why not lock it in? And speaking of locking things in, we are indeed going to have the Fuse play for Fantasy. I love to see it. Just to update you guys on what has happened to Fuse recently. He got a big buff to his cluster charges. Yes, he doesn't need to have four of those now. And also, just for that little icing on the cake, they go through hard walls now. So he will be able to put those on, say, like CCTV or the single panel in construction and just run amok of the entire setup of Xset. The, the cluster charges just spew everywhere. Here we go. It's really, really strong for him, and that's exactly what they're going to go for. And here come the hockey pucks. Just gonna throw those in. Unfortunately, only one may be eaten up by that ADS. The rest of it is going to knock out quite a bit of utility hanging out in the walls. One doesn't make it too deep enough, so you're still gonna see that Banshee in the back left corner survive it. But now that has gone by. They'll also breach the walls. No more opportunities to deploy the remaining three of those charges. Still gonna have some other opportunities to run the map to potentially use them, but more than likely it's past the point of no return for Fantasy. Not really a moment where he's gonna be able to pick that up and potentially use it as an exploitative chance. But now it's gonna be down to various drone games, try and see what their next potential move could be. They do have to worry about Yaga currently inside of construction, but Exit have practically sat on their hands for most of this round. Not too much action here for round five just yet, as Furia's only gotten the CCTV wall open. Now with some angles here, trying to see if we can potentially find anybody playing around the construction area. A beautiful drop here from Miracle. He'll catch Yaga completely off guard, and that's going to be the open frag they were wishing for. Reloading, continuing to hold this back now. Waiting for the repeat to come nice. in, and he's oh <laughs> has the correct patience about it. Indeed, will succeed in picking up the killer. Almost looked like it went the other way, but not in that, not in this case. Here. Miracle able to secure the first pickup for himself against Spirits. Actually, second one now. So he managed to take down Yaga a few seconds prior to some great early impact coming in from him. And Rare is going to stack on top of that X set, getting attached too aggressive here, giving over far too many early gunfights, and leaving themselves with a shell of their former defense in a two v five. No, I wouldn't even say it's that. I think it's a pure patience from Furia as X set has. Uh, They've been practically murdered every single time they attempt to do anything at all. I mean, even for Yaga, he's just trying to play safe inside of construction, and he has somebody just jump off the roof and take a gunfight with him. Uh, Furia, a heck of a lot more calculated than that, and they earned that flawless round. Well earned indeed, so we will wait and see. Now, if we're going to see Exit decide to retry this site, given the fairly one-sided nature of how that just played out there, or if it'll extend over towards Jim, where, once again, also managed to drop that one earlier on. You're even going to see it go contested there for a sec as they are trying to click it for themselves before the IGL made the call, but it does end up going towards Jim once everything is said and done here. So that is the site that they'll try to play out here, feeling that that one was a little bit closer than their most recent attempt in cash and CCTV. I would generally tend to agree with this choice. Yeah, I would definitely agree with you here. I, I think that Jim Bedroom Attack is, at least through the years, for Clubhouse became an easier and easier site to play, especially as we've added more ops to be able to assist with this. I think that also Jim Bedroom makes quite a few teams very creative in the way that they want to hold things. I think we've seen like a multitude of iterations of whether it be operator lineups or the way that people think that you should hold things across. Uh, you know, and it's always been such an amazing site in order to do that, especially with the play that you can have around, you know, cash, like what X that's doing right now. You can connect the uh, double panel there, uh, or rather the single panel between construction and cash, and that's really 
really nice cross angles to be able to support some of your teammates uh, and also extend all the way out towards cash with like a shield or something like that and slash some ADSs down. It just makes it such a nuisance to clear because uh, for the most part, when you're trying to go for gym bedroom offense, you're really looking to try and get that jacuzzi wall open, start applying pressure to the master balcony and stuff like that. And obviously, that takes manpower. Trying to clear out cash sites starting at the cash stairwell requires a lot of manpower. So all of a sudden, you know, you're running into a couple of different rocks and hard places and you're trying to get things figured out. The good news is, is well, John, we don't have to figure it out. Furia does. So we'll have to see what they want to do here as they're finally out and about. About 30 seconds in. Let's take a quicker peek at what Fury are going to be attempting. There's no real surprise to start things off. They do need to clear this extension to the CCTV and cash. They'll pop open the wall corresponding towards it. Not going to be much resistance inside of the, the CCTV room itself, but a little bit deeper than that inside of cash. That's when things will start to get a bit more troublesome here for the Fury to clear. You can see them only making a like headroom clear here, not even actually opening up the breach entirely so that they can take down anyone who wants to get aggressive against that breach, but not going to be able to see them respond to it outright due to the angle that was created. You can see as well, this is a bit tricky for the members of Fury. You've got Diaz holding on his own with a red rotate being opened as well. And then Spirits has this chopped up ceiling or rather top wall, I guess you'd call this, to be able to try and chuck out a nitro through the breach, waiting for the rest of it to be opened, I believe, for an actual entry attempt to be made. You might have to watch out for a garage presence too, as it looks like another member of Fury has managed to sneak themselves over towards Catwalk. What a fantastic delay thus far by Xset. It's really just been the defensive setup that's been slowly forcing Furia to take their time. And they're going to lose rare early here. So all of this time sync, all for not at the current moment, but Fantasy's been able to get in behind the Xset members. He won't be able to claim Spirits. In fact, Spirits, he shoots back, John. He'll claim the kill, and he's still holding on to cash. Very surprised that kill went the way it did there, trying to be able to turn that fight back around. Spirits thought he was dead to rights there when they had the lock on him through that box sitting on top of the cash desk. but. Wasn't able to follow him through, unfortunately, and a great response from Spirits to save his own life there. Bring the numbers down to an even more dire situation for Furia. Spirits still on deck, waiting for the swing to work itself in here. And you can see they are trying to get a little bit inside so they can start putting pressure on construction while still having not cleared out Spirits, but they'll finally accomplish that. Now he's been baited towards the door. And it's going to be some great play from STK to accomplish that. Finally get their first kill on the board. If they can work together to get one more, they're on even territory. The problem is that time bank starting to get a little bit low here at around 40 seconds remain. Yeah, a little overzealous from Spirits, but able to get a lot of a lot done inside of that position. So I just got to give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes down to that. Gomez in a pivotal position here inside of Logistics. Andy will be holding on to the main wall for Jacuzzi as Miracle forces his way into construction. An offensive oh, matrix being daggers. built around this side as Fury will find their second mark and equalize here. The smoke damage starting to bleed through though onto Miracle as Diaz takes down one, Diaz takes down two, and Gomez will wrap it up with a bow, making a 4-2 half for Xset. Not a surprise to see that round breaking down the way it did when you consider how things opened up there. So much control inside of Xset's court before the play even really began with Fury trying to clear out the extension inside of CCTV and catch. Some good attempts to battle it back when they're able to catch, as you said, an overzealous spirit peeking towards the door. But even that kill wasn't enough as they were still down by one and just too claustrophobic of a push inside of Jim. Allows for Exit to get revenge from their last attempt on that site. Lock it down, giving them a 1-1 one, one record on the half and as well securing the 4-2 overall scoreline. The teams now switch sides, sides and it's Exit's turn to go on to the attack. They need three rounds to close this one down. It is indeed. And this is where things get uh, potentially damning for Furia because Exit's offensive sides have been ludicrous inside of the NAL. I mean, very, very aggressive fronts, especially with the way that Spirits likes to call for this team. We could see a lot of calculated plays come through. So, but again, it's going to be pretty hard to say for you and I, because we didn't really get to see Xset's earlier games. So it yeah. could be, you know, a little off kilter at the current moment. But luckily enough, we are here to find that out for all of you at home. There will be some setup still to be done here for Furious. They'll prep the hatch for impacts, although STK, the only one with one. Attackers must locate and defuse the just the nitro cells for the most part beyond that. Three of them, in fact, so Fury actually looking to make heavy use of that inside. Yeah, the best way to counter hard breach is <laughs> yeah, chuck yeah, a nitro just, cell out. Just blow them up. Exactly. They're going to blow us up, so that's fair. <laughs> an eye for an eye, as yeah, they yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. 
Either way, Fury here looking to really make their mark, and they, they need to right off the bat. As oh, there he is. Psychotic so man. Rare, trying to go for a crazy swing, exposes himself, and it's going to take quite a bit of damage. Fantasy also getting hit a bit too, it looks like. Oh, Spirit's struck what? by a bullet. He's or two. outside. Spirit's getting hit up here. Oh, oh my goodness. Alive in a corner. He's been brought down, trying to self revive, but he had already used that adrenal surge. You can see he was affected by it in the midst of that fight. Gomez gets revenge, though, and once again, in his X set to take the lead here. And you can see Fantasy creep up on the breach currently being made by the main balcony as fantasy is going to try to get in the way of this too what an incredible moment there for gomez when when your numbers called just like we were talking about in that previous game sometimes you have to step up and gomez almost instantaneously refrags onto stk and now furia worse for wear yet again here and gomez almost sneakily gets in through oil pip a miracle will shut him down with the smg 11. that's the free one though that's the one that exit is necessarily oh, oh, need to worry about oh, 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 on the chase but handy, he gets the over-the-top rope kill this time around, spins it back onto Yaga, and as well, Fury are just gonna race themselves back down into the basement where they'll be much more secure for this remaining minute and a half. Kino as well as Diaz have a lot of work to do, and thankfully, they've got a lot of time to do it, but this setup is gonna be tough to clear, even with the health advantage. Yeah, pretty miscalculated here from X set in the later part of the round, as there's caught off guard by Furious rotations, especially around main stairs, get really, really punished, and now the two versus three, but a lot of potential here in this position. Minute and 10 seconds remain, and Diaz with a lot of drone potential, and that's exactly what he'll be on to. Also past that, all of these members for Furia at the current moment die within one to two bullets. So it's gonna be very close. Yes, Fantasy will actually much. end up spraying down Kino. So many bullets flooding in through the wall of blue at the current moment. Diaz more than likely will have so many crosses held on him here. It's gonna be pre-fire central as he bounces back and forth off the AC unit here in blue. Just panic peeking so much to try and find anything he can work with. Nearly is able to negotiate a kill right there, but instead it is Miracle that wins out the fight. Furia with a definitive start to the second half here, puts themselves on the board for their basement hold, and sets themselves up for a comeback as well, as they're immediately just one round behind Xset's scoreline by taking the first round of the second half. And you really got a feel for Xset there. It, feel, it felt like to them that they could get away with a lot more than they definitely could. Furia taking it to them as soon as they try to overextend themselves towards site, which was, at least to them, unsuspected, right? Xset's like, yo, we're gonna sneak down here. No one should be exactly ready for us to be inside of blue and trying to take these aggressive fights, but but they were wrong. Furia has definitely dealt with these situations before, and they're going to handle this one quite handedly yet again. So for Xset, their lead stands at a precipice here, able to negotiate a very successful defensive half at 4-2 with some pretty chaotic play following up behind that. That's kind of what we've expected from Xset, of course, here. But generally speaking, you'd expect a much closer game with that type of play style and the kind of mixed results, the mixed gunfights that have come with that. Xset, though, took the lead, however, are now at risk of losing it. Furia close behind here. Another fairly easy to defend. Defender side in sight coming up here inside of CCTV and Cash as well. Xset looking to breach through here. Plenty of hard to bring back to the table to accomplish that. No real surprises on the attacker lineup, and more importantly, we're only going to get that one repick, it looks like, over towards a lion instead of a buck for Yaga. Pretty strong pick here, as it'll isolate a lot of these Furia members and make these gunfights a heck of a lot easier, as they won't be allowed to move when those EE1Ds do indeed go off. As for the rest of Xset's lineup, it's fairly straightforward. The Mav coming in, as well as the Ace to try and help with the wall. And speaking of the wall, Furia potentially where that Xset could be rushing, but obviously not going to be the case here. We have no thermite, so won't have anybody just explode the wall open and instantaneously gain access for everyone that wants to try and play plat. But that's why we saw Furia end up putting that gas canister on the wall. And up here, we'll start things up for Diaz as he starts torching things across, and we'll soon have this wall soft. Gomez pop this open and actually get down to these gunfights. The yeah, defenders did uh, chunk it a little bit the wall there. If you guys notice those bits of soft. A shotgun hole, that's just kind of slowing down the opening a bit. It's not really going to serve any massive advantage, but it just takes an extra 10 seconds or so off the clock as they need to uh, be able to utilize that. We do have that Koyo canister sitting on the other side of it. Oh, nice spot from a Gomez to get a bit of damage, and I believe onto Miracle there. And Miracle even testing it a second time here. They will need to watch out, though, when they pop this open. It's like I said, that Goyo canister sits on the other side. 
Unfortunately enough, though, as you were talking about the holes being shot, the whole reason that they do that is because it makes the breach so messy. Look at the amount oh, of time DS has had yeah. to stay on this torch. And it's all because this bottom portion of the wall, there's a little pixel that's still holding it over towards the left-hand side here. You can actually see it towards DS. He literally just pinged it. So that right there is what's holding up the wall at the current moment. DS will actually end up taking a Goyo. lot of damage via that Goyo fire that leaks out of the breach. And STK almost with a kill there as well. Exit trying to find a way through this round at the current moment. It's actually a really smart play from Handy to do that, putting it on the wall there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see other teams oh. start implementing that. Another top rope swing here from STK. He pays the price for it, but Fantasy immediately exchanges. Yaga maintains control, however, with a second pickup for Xset and brings it down to a 4v3. It's all going to be on the site players now as we boil down to the last minute. Oh, it's starting to boil up to a point here. Xset, they've gotten control of Garage, but they still need to get things cleared out and have the setup. Start pointing towards an actual plan. Kino going to take a lot of damage, but Kino's going to down the member instead. Miracle actually won't be able to be picked up just yet. Hopefully can get in behind the green box and potentially get picked up here by Rare, but no, Andy's going to go down before then. Kino, I mean, he's on fire at the current moment. Not literally, hopefully, but as of right now, they're doing a bang-up job of holding things down on this offensive side. Rare's going to try and rotate around. He does not have a Nitro sub for this, but he most definitely has a shotgun as he'll move down through the lounge area. Won't be able to get up the cash stairs as finally Gomez will pick him up. They're going to rush up the back end as well. Miracle, so much to deal with at the current moment, but he does have an opportunity here. Frag grenades out, stun grenades out. Gomez with a lot of damage dealt to him. Miracle with no potential answer just yet. He'll get one, he'll get two, and John, that was getting close. <laughs> Close there if he's able to produce that shotgun. A lot of damage potentially coming out onto the Xset members, but they'll lock it down. A little dodgy there, but thankfully, the round aside from that, pretty one-sided towards Xset there, the constant aggression roiling in. And it's a shame because I like what we were seeing from Fury, especially with the Goyo canister positioning. You probably saw that second one that was just beyond the breach. So even if that first one did minimal damage, they can still wait, deploy that second one when the actual execute comes in and hold them back once again there. Unfortunately, when those Goyo canisters were exploded. There was far too much remaining pressure from other points on the map still coming out against the setup, so they weren't really able to capitalize on it as much as they would have liked to. Xset's patience game is really what got them so far inside of that round, especially for Yaga. Yaga just sat downstairs inside a garage and was like, all right, I'm just going to hold down here. We'll see what potentially happens with the remaining time that we have. And then Furia just jump over the balcony and yep. gift him a kill. That's all he wanted that entire time, and that's exactly what he got. So just those little moments of decision making where it's either overextended try and take the fight with the Raptors guy or just sit still, let your team try to build things up to a certain point around the map and pull Furia to you know different points and make it where they have to focus on other things. You might randomly have a Jaeger jump down from a balcony. You know, Bringing this back and really highlights the kind of mishmash of regional play styles that Xset has gone for here because they're executing into that last round in very much the same way that Furia was doing back in the first half as well, using that patience to really suss out some of the members of the defensive side there and be able to take them down when they finally take that extra step or two into the open that they necessarily wouldn't have been able to do. Yeah, as for Furia, though, they have to get a hold of these nerves, John. I mean, if we start to see them be more and more antsy throughout these rounds, Xset's going to continue to punish them in very comparable ways to what we saw inside of round eight. But now for STK, he's feeling himself. He'll be downstairs inside of Billiards, peeking out of the double window, but won't be feeling himself for much longer as he no longer has a pulse. Fantasy will be able to capitalize on Kino, though, so that'll be the ace off the board, but we still have some hard breeds in the likes of DS and Maverick. It's going to potentially be a problem for DS, though, if we run into issues knocking out the wall. I'm going to assume that that won't happen a second time there. That's just a bit of an unlucky maneuver with what ended up happening with the wall. And didn't ultimately trip them up from winning the round either. So, like I said, able to get over that without too much of an issue. Going to be looking to accomplish the same thing as it is, once again, that hold on the inside of CCTV and Cash. You can already see Fantasy paying attention to the breach just in case our Maverick reveals something a bit too much. But now he's going to make sure he starts from the corner this time to and he's lane prone. avoid that problem from the previous round. <laughs> And then I think sure, I'm pretty sure he got the left he, side. He got it. It. So I think he's good. And there we go. Just needs to get the last remaining bit of this half, and we should see the wall fall away. Oh no. Uh, yep. There's it's that it's, a, it's oh. literally right in the center. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Um, How does this happen twice in a row? I mean, DS, you're just not the map, man. Get it, like, just, get it. just give it up. Oh, Where is dude. It? Yeah, well, the crappy, the crappy part there here. We go, there, there we, there we go. go. The, the crappy yeah. part about that is that, like what we were talking about before, when they end up breaking that wall, you have to lay prone in order to guarantee that. But that almost guarantees that somebody shoots at you as well. Uh, and that's why we see a lot of people try to crouch and torch it. But that makes it to where those lines that are made when you break that soft wall actually don't torch through the. 
reinforcement properly. So you have to hit that prone, but I mean, at least he's able to get it open this time around. The problem is now is that it seems like it's costed them some bodies in order to do so. Yeah, this is not looking like the confidence we saw out of X in the previous round, nor just the you know, amount of setups we saw oh. before. They don't have Ready these angles bearing down on the defenders. As you can see, Diaz swinging in to pick up that trade at least, but it's too late. The one for one is not going to mean a whole lot at this point here because Fury can do that, pick up one more on their own, and now this is already a nearly unwinnable situation for Diaz. He's got a 1v3 set before him. He does have a fairly healthy amount of time to play into, but so much to clear out. This is a winnable fight at top red. It doesn't look like that player has a lot of support. He's going to mask the unpinning sound of the nade as it goes in, though. Looks like it's going to get eaten up by one of those magnets. So, and he has his life saved by his own utility. Good placement of that yeah, there. Nice attempt at it from Diaz, but doesn't ultimately work wow. out. That's an even better one, though. Rips the head right off of Miracle. Two more players to go. You got about 10 seconds for each one. Let's see if he can get the job done as he enters the site. Already has pressure against him. He's going to go for a planet attempt, actually, to bait players out. No one takes it. Oh, I correct myself. Rare does. He comes out into the open. There's the stick now, probably, as Handy's got to rerotate into CCTV. He's going up, oh. but no! Handy just barely closing it down for Furia as he gets this 1v1. I was so very scary there. In fact, I thought Handy was just playing for the audio cue. I thought he was just trying to bounce back and forth and get him off the case and then potentially rotate into cash to try and dwindle down the remaining time that they actually had there. But gives Tiaz a chance instead and wins it pretty handedly. So now for Furia, after we go into this tech timeout, they will be within one round of catching up to Exit here on Club. Very, very close between both of these teams right now. Fury more than likely not wanting to take any risks in this upcoming round as they'll be repeating the basement hold. Should be actually fairly well secured on this one as they took it at the outset of this opening, or they took it at the outset of this half as well. But still, their coach, as you can see here, has a lot of input to give. They have not used the pause just yet. There was still a phase of this matchup here just a few minutes ago where Exit was truly dominating. So probably some input from back then, making sure that they don't run into those same pitfalls as they make a rerun. And actually, if you'll notice, the site has changed since we went into the pause. They're actually going for a gym bedroom hold. So it seems like they got something to throw at Exit here, possibly. Yeah, I, and honestly, I think that's exactly what we're loading up here. We got the Womai and also the Valkyrie coming through and potentially some castle barricades. Just to make it more fun. You know, you want to try and deny as many angles as you can, especially on a site like that. If you can potentially keep things locked down on, say, like the main stairs, that makes your life a whole heck of a lot easier instead of having to constantly deal with that pressure around the top of main. But past that, I mean, there's so many different ways you can utilize Castle on this, whether it be, you know, the master side windows or what have you. There's always going to be some avenues that they're going to be able to shut down. So see that brought to the table as well as a nook coming through for Gomez. All right, let's take a look here. Let's see if Xset can maintain their lead. They've been staying ahead by one or two throughout this half so far. Have not managed to drop the outright lead as we started 4-2, of course. But as you can see, Furia has kept right on to Xset's tail. We did have a Blackbeard pick initially for Yaga, but it seems like that's being re-picked away. So that's definitely not going to be staying here. Yana is already locked in there for the re-pick. More interesting one, though, is going to be down towards Gomez. He's potentially going to be swapping the Zofia for the Nook. And more than likely, that's going to stay as well. Of course, we're seeing more and more out of her because she has the nades and, of course, the utility kit. Players finding out wow. how to use her more and more. So, we're going to continue to see that brought in by more and more teams, I believe. But never mind, it gets swapped away. They won't go for it. That's super sad, honestly. Just looking across Furia's board here, this is almost a perfect round to have a nook. There's not yep. any barbed wire, there's nothing you really have to worry about. And in fact, they've brought Valkyrie, so they're more than likely leaning more into their info game and trusting those cameras as to what they're seeing. And that's where Nook capitalizes. So, to not have her here, I mean, obviously, Obviously, X said they still have a lot of different ways to break this down, especially with Yaga on Sledge. I mean, you still have the frag grenades. You got a great gun on the L85 and the Sledgehammer. So, you know, there's no real argument sake there, but it would have been really cool to see Nook in that uh, situation. There's no Flores in play, remind you as well. So maybe they're worried about their ability to knock out things like deployable shields and, and other forms of utility a bit deeper into the site where they can be a bit peskier to access. And maybe they're hoping the lifeline saves themselves there. Potential for Soft Breach, too, if Yaga ends up going down earlier on here. So I'm a bit disappointed we didn't see the Nook as well. He's really definitely seen it before, but Fantasy ready to fight off immediately against this pressure coming in from the balcony wall there. He's going to fire at least one bullet back against Yaga, but quickly falls away from that and takes up a security position instead. A bit droned out here inside of construction and finally catches up with that drone. And now for Yaga, again clearing out the top of red. Fury have already high-tailed it out of cash, but Rare is on the hunt. Gomez will be droning upstairs. No one will check out Secret, and that is where Rare currently resides. He does definitely have a few different facets he can potentially abuse here on these Xset members as my grin grows by tenfold. Simply sitting in this moment, 
potentially try and go for Barrage. Also a cash here. Stairwell, but it's all going to be on this timer, depending on when he can potentially make his move. He's got to get through quite a bit of utility, and he's actually just going to straight up shoot the drone and leave. So now Kino is going to be looking down towards Cash here for the time being, but still so much time on the board for Xed, and a lot of damage dealt to Spirits here from STK off-site, so might be even delaying a little bit more. Lining themselves up mainly oh. on the outside of the building here to push themselves forward. Nitro is deployed, nearly is able to grab Spirits. He's brought down to about a third of his remaining HP after that blows up, but still staying alive, staying in the fight, and thankfully keeping those adrenal surges in check too, so he'll be able to boost himself right back up right around 50% after that boost up oh. there. Oh, and they gonna bank just a little bit. It's gonna do a bit of damage to these players. Your spirits just can't get lucky in this situation. We are going to see as well that battery go down, but unfortunately it's on the wrong side. So it's not gonna stop this break from being open. Kino oh. going for three <laughs> at the start of this entry. Three members of Fury are knocked out. STK, Fantasy, and Handy all eliminated. Miracle is gonna strike back though with not just one, but a second as well. Fury are not done fighting this just yet. Rare needs to reinsert himself into this, but he's been read into. Dios and Spirits get the last two kills. That's Xset up on map point now. How, how the hell does Kino even get that? That, that literally makes zero sense as to how that breaks down, but three kills practically given to the ace, and they'll walk away with yet another round. It's going to be attack timeout from X set now. They're practically putting Furia on ice. That has to be a tilter after what we just saw. Yeah, again, Furia, keep in mind, too, the tactical timeout that they just took like one or two rounds ago to build up all this strategy, build up all of this prowess to finally stop X set from running away with the game, but it doesn't work. And now Butega wants to give some input as well. You can see him very emotive at the moment here. They just need this one one last round, he wants to make sure that his input is noted for this potential final round of play here for Xset to lock down the game. One last round, John, separates Xset from their very first international victory. And man, does that have to be something to experience. For a team so that's been together for like two months. Yeah, for a team that's been together for two months, but also for an org that's been in siege and dedicated to you know this product for so very long to not have that yet. Uh, I mean, you have to be extremely excited for them, but Furia definitely do still have some opportunity here to at least force it into overtime and give themselves a chance to steal this away. Pause is ended, folks. We are going back in game now, and it is looking like it's going to be a retry of the basement hold from Furia. So let's see if this will become their Attack graveyard the or if it will become their potential right of ascension to get themselves oh, back into man. the game and into overtime. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? It's the NA special. Baby. It's the NA special, baby. Made famous by Mint, the coach of Dark Zero. The Blitz is in play, as we've seen it time and time again on maps like Oregon, and well, really just Oregon. Blitz can still get a lot done across the map when it comes to clearing out those really hard to reach spaces. You know, unless you have something that's explosive or like a toxic babe, Blitz just gets to run at you. And as soon as you pay too long enough of attention, you're now flashed and you have practically zero chance in order to win that engagement. I mean, even earlier, we saw a Blitz hop over the deployable shield and elbow on Oregon and melee the shield player in order to win been, out that engagement. I've seen quite a few melee kills coming from the players on Blitz, so they get them pretty mind. often, especially like, like you said, that construction wrap on Oregon is a pretty common spot for it to happen. It's now going to mean that Furia really need to reinforce their extensions, but we can have something else in play here. STK, you can see he's lining up for something outside of this soft breach, and he's got an impact in pocket ready to play. Ooh, try to pre-fire as well on some team intel. We're not going to find it. Unfortunately, those shots do give him away as he backs out from this play. You'd be surprised by the amount of times that you pre-fire those two garage doors and somebody just magically dies outside. So if you're ever hanging out in garage early game, just shoot a couple bullets. You never really know. So either way, though, next set, they're going to take their time here, John. They do not want to try and overextend themselves just yet. We're already 45 seconds in, but they haven't exactly exploded into any part of the map. In fact, they're droning things out currently over near stocks and everything else in between trying to see what gonna exactly is happening the inside clear. of the lounge and yes it's going to be a drawback here is miracle trying to force his way back <laughs> it's a blitz he's got to hightail it out of there spirits is oh. in and he's dead as he immediately ads's trying to get into sight that had to be the scariest thing ever just a full speed blitz sprinting directly past your toxic babe not even giving him a chance to really be hit by i don't think he took any damage from it but unfortunately his opponent got way too far back and he had support from teammates so spirits quickly shut down and the blitz play just doesn't really work out this time around.
Yeah, super unfortunate. You could see that X that was also trying to potentially get control of blue if Spirits did get anything done inside of that push, but obviously not. Fantasy now having a couple of issues of his own, but he'll be able to work his way through it as he'll take down Gomez. So with a minute and 20 seconds remaining, Furia, I mean, they just practically put this feather in their cap already. Not too much to worry about for them, especially with STK still on the roam. He can just rotate right back in behind Exit before this execute happens, pick up some extra kills, and that's more than likely Furia within one round as well, actually, Miracle will go down to Kino. Exxon, unfortunately, in my opinion, banking a bit too much on this Blitz play here, and the fact that they've ignored the upstairs clear is going to come back to haunt them in this final minute as you have those dissensions from the upstairs holds looming against them. Exxon have to keep a constant flank watch because of this. It'll work out okay, though. Yogg is able to catch STK as he works his way back down here. A 2v3 means that only one of these players needs to pick up an extra kill aside from that. Just one for ones. We'll win it out here for Exxon. If Dias get one and Yaga gets two, we've got that 7-4 scoreline locked in. So Furia, I've got to be a little bit scared about this current situation and you can tell they're not moving an inch out from their hard lock positions deeper in the site there they want x set to take this first step forward not the other way around frag grenade out rare will take down yaga now it's a 1v3 for ds lucas fantasy with a quick end to that and a quad on the round furia not out of this one just yet and i have to agree with you john too many eggs one basket with the blitz play there and really oversold their hand as well it, re it really looked like they had a lot of faith in what was going to go down as spirit swings that door but like i was saying before super ill-advised the fact that you're running through dirt ads as blitz coming out the door more than likely somebody's going to shoot you right in the face now times out of ten. Now, had they cleared out that upstairs hole before going for the dirt play, which, to be fair, is not really how you do that strat. That's fair. Um, <laughs> if they had done that, <laughs> there was a possibility, even if the, bl the, the, the blitz play failed, they probably still could have won that round because they didn't have the, the flanks to worry about, so they wouldn't have had to constantly Attack keep someone on flank watch. But, like I said, it's not really how that strategy plays, so... I mean, but also, inside of the same vein, I do agree with you. I do definitely do think they could have used spirits for that roam clear, yeah. because when it comes to blitz, it's one of the things that, like, he's just an unstoppable force. You yep. don't want to deal with it, so you, you don't, immediately back up. The problem up. is, if you use it for the roam clear, you can't really use it for the site take, because now, exactly. now they know it's there. So well, they, they know it's there. To it. they, they know it's there, and they also, you more than likely took a decent amount of damage because you are blitz. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like... A couple you, foot shots. Yeah, a couple first. foot shots. Your shoulder gets tagged up a little bit. You know, it, that shield just doesn't fit his body the same as Monty, let me tell you. Gentlemen, so Xset still on map and match point here, but for Fury, only one away from triggering overtime now due to Xset all inning on the Blitz play in the previous round, leaving them with only this extra one to play out. Gomez will repick over towards Ayana, not too surprising there, seeing as we were missing it. Those extra nades certainly going to help here as they would have only had four aside from that. Sounds like a lot, really isn't inside of C train now, especially with how much utility mitigation is still generally played into it. They actually got a pretty light amount of that, speaking of which, for Fury in this round, only Fantasy deployed into it as no Jaeger has been picked up by Furia this time, so that extra set of nades might become an extra set of kills here for Xset if they can position them in the correct spot. Yes, indeed. An extended hold here yet again for Furia with STK all the way inside of CCTV. Rare currently down below him inside of the basement for logistics, but it's a actually not going to be either of them to get this first kill. Fantasy to go down. I believe that was a hot drone there for Xset that finds him in Harry Potter all the way downstairs in Garage. So what a find there for Xset. STK also taking a lot of damage as he tries to recoup this situation, but this actually might be the death nail if he ends up getting tagged up yet again and goes down. Other problem with Fantasy being the first to be eliminated too. Keep in mind that those my disc deploy rapidly or continue to become available for him as the round goes on. So the deeper into it you get, the more you will have available or can potentially be thrown out if some from the earlier portion of the round were already used. So the fact that he's died at about 2.30 is probably not gonna leave a whole lot on the field here. Also makes it to where Xset can just take their sweet time. They've already tagged yep. up SDK. They know that, and they know that more than likely Furia is not going to be play playing Thunderbird in this setup because they just haven't before, so don't really have too much to worry about. So they're simply not going to sweat it. Some drones in just to confirm positions here for Xset as they continue to try and get this jacuzzi wall open, which I do believe they achieve here on the right-hand side. Also an evil eye over inside of this space to try and hold things down. I do believe an EQ1D going out from Yogg there for just a split nice. second, but Rare actually with a great find is still be able to get in behind the Xset members who are seemingly unaware of Cash still being held down by the defense. Bandit in the night as well, just runs right up, picks the kill and dashes away. No chance for a refrag there for Xset. They're gonna have to find another pastures here. Is there, oh my God. what is going on with this wall right now? <laughs> no, man, I, I, that's Xset that's and these wall breaches are just not working out today. <laughs> it was over at the main balcony, over by CCTV, and now they're struggling with this one too. Very unfortunate circumstances for them at the current moment, but 
Exet still can capitalize here and win out this round. Miracle awaiting the drop here for Logistics, but he'll be discovered by Yaga, who could potentially swing into this quickly here. A Nitro Cell inside Rare's pocket, but nothing here for Miracle, as obviously he's the smoke. So potentially try and find some other things here, but no, no flares will help him out. No shotgun either as he tries to run out of the actual room. But now for Exet, it's brutality against Furia. They're taking down every member, and Yaga will clean it up. It's 7-5 fashion as Exet find their very first international win. As far as Furia is concerned, their day's not done just yet. One loss on the board, and unfortunately at the bitter end of regulation, won't even be able to get the extra point for going to OT there as well. They'll probably be a little disappointed about that, but they can't stay that way as they have another match coming up immediately after this interregional one versus Liquid. So you guys are gonna definitely wanna stick around for that. Absolutely, I'm so very excited for that, especially with, you know, kind of the taste we've already gotten of Furia. To see them go up against a team like Liquid, oh, it's gonna be feisty, I'm so very excited. But as for this match, it just seemed like, honestly, Xset could have been even more dominant inside of this, depending on how some of these strategies went. You know, we could have seen a 7-4, 7-3. That would have been pretty easy for them and really wouldn't have been questioned at all either with how that game was going. I'm curious if Xset had the same opinion of Fury that I had coming into this game, that they were a little bit more of a reserve team weren't going to play as aggressively as we saw them do, at least inside of those first few rounds. Maybe that's what threw them off initially here. But either way, after a few bumpy rounds, they're able to get control of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go to a short break. When we do come back, we'll be breaking down this matchup and getting you ready for the next one, our final matchup of the day.